The EU's current proposals on revising the Northern Ireland Protocol are ultimately unworkable for medicine suppliers, an industry chief has warned. An extremely low number of new licenses being issued for the country meant there was a Force 9 gale heading Northern Ireland's way. There was a real threat to medicine supplies and prices in the region right now, but already a bigger storm warning has been issued for the future. Mark Samuels, chief executive of the British Generic Manufacturers Association, BGMA, called for a UK-wide licence as the only way to avoid this storm. Writing in trade publication Chemist and Druggist on Tuesday, he warned that implications from the protocol pose a real threat to the generic medicine supplies now. Generic medicines make up four out of five products prescribed in the UK, including Northern Ireland. They are unbranded versions of patented drugs, that are often cheaper and more widely available. Mr Samuels wrote, almost all of Northern Ireland's medicines come from Great Britain and a sting in the Northern Ireland protocol hurts the supply chain. He added, if you examine the latest proposals put forward from the EU, you could be mistaken for thinking progress is being made. Its latest plan rode back on an earlier insistence that quality control laboratories need to be duplicated on the ground in Northern Ireland. That is a big tick. However, more broadly, it is ultimately unworkable because it does not provide legal certainty for manufacturers if other negotiations fail. The EU's proposal includes practical barriers to allowing Northern Ireland to be supplied with the same packs as the rest of the UK. He said it was the BGMA's belief that the UK's Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency MHRA, should assess and maintain the majority of licences without the necessity to participate in the centralised procedure or mutual recognition procedures. Among a sea of theoretical fixes, it's a practical solution. Otherwise, the further work created by what is, in reality, managing a separate Northern Ireland dossier will, in most cases, render sustainable supply unviable because of the additional complexity for both industry and regulators. It's sink or swim. In the absence of a long-term solution for goods travelling into Northern Ireland, the immediate impact is already being seen, with medicines being discontinued. But Mr Samuels warned that these discontinuations are only the first wave. He added, Medicines for Europe which represents the generic industry at the EU level, has issued a bigger storm warning. In the first part of the year, Northern Ireland only accounted for 38 out of 771 new applications for medicine licences, which was extremely low. This put Northern Ireland below Iceland, a country which has a population one-fifth of the size. Mr Samuels added, our own October survey of members found that hardly any companies have filed for a specific standalone Northern Ireland New Medicines license.
The dearth of authorizations for new medicines is a force nine gale heading Northern Ireland's way. The only way to avoid this storm is a UK-wide license. Otherwise, there will be shortages and price rises. He called on negotiators for the UK and the EU to expedite discussions and agree on a solution now that allows manufacturers to continue supply as they have always done. Anything less is non-negotiable in our view.